Dr. Michael Lim, cardiologist with SLU Care and SSM SLU Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, I read with quite uh, a bit of interest that women who drink one drink of alcohol a day may increase breast cancer risk, which is interesting because last week they said if I drank one drink a day, my heart attacks would go down. So all of these studies, all of these each and every day, we get bombarded with good, bad, and ugly. What are we s supposed to believe? How do we live our lives? Great question. I think this is the, the whole deal, right? So that, uh, there's also a study which showed that if you uh, ate chocolate, you had a lower incidence of having, having atrial fibrillation. Right. So uh, there's all these associations that are out there. And so I wanted to maybe take a step back and, and kind of cover how these things come up. Um, and, and how they come up is uh, in one of two ways. Uh, there's a lot of what we call, in, as healthcare professionals, administrative data. There's data which is submitted to uh, health insurance companies, the federal government, uh, and it classifies people under different codes and, and settings. And so um, you can look at several hundred thousand people and start looking for associations. Mm. Okay, so data mining, uh, if you will. Well, it, it, there's a little more of a purpose than just sort of mining, uh, but you're looking for really an association in a database. So, uh, what correlates with your yellow shirt, um, and then what pops up, and then, whoa, who else wears a yellow shirt frequently, and what else pops up? Right. And so, in general, this is how these things pop up, where one drink of wine a day or one drink and breast cancer and then there's an association and what that association is 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 sort of you know there there seems to be a group of people who drink the wine and they seem to predict but not a hundred percent uh th this group of people who end up having breast cancer um there's a whole lot of other factors in there but from a statistical standpoint this seems like it's more associated than it's disassociated which is a really vague statement, more associated than it's <laughs> disassociated, right? But it's all, it's a mathematical guess, right? right? If, if you have 17 uh, and you're playing blackjack, do you hit or do you, do you stay? Right. You know, what's, what's, the, what's the odds on that? Some people will take another card, depends on what else is showing on the table, depends how many ships you have, all this other stuff. But uh, gross odds uh, is what, and gross associations are what these are all about, whether it's chocolate, whether it's wine, whether it's alcohol, uh, other alcohol for men, whether it's uh, eating this or eating that, if this is good for you, this is bad for you. These are just associations. The other part is association is not causation, meaning if there is no proof that if you drink a glass of wine a day, you will get breast cancer. Right. There is no association. It's not saying that. So, you know, this is, these, these are sort of, um, uh, they're not entry level studies, but they're still studies reflective of the fact that we don't know enough and we haven't gotten down to the details of this causes this. So what is the effect? What, is, well, what would be the real effect? If you drink a glass of wine a day, how, 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 how does that change your body to potentially cause the breast cancer? What exactly right. happens? And it, that's where we really need to get to. You know what's interesting is um, settled science, say on vaccines, people don't necessarily believe, but they'll believe a strange study that says drinking a, a glass of wine a day might cause breast cancer. Well, there's a, the vaccine thing is still uh, fairly controversial right. uh, based on a, a, f a few very vocal people uh, that have pushed forward over the past years. But the, uh, I think, you know, what, what we've tried to talk about on our segment here weekly is to try to um, get to your question of how do you live your life, right? right? So we got to be real here. We can't necessarily overreact to this week's news. And... Uh, you know, this week's news is not as bad as what comes out of Washington, D.C., uh, from a health <laughs> standpoint. But, I mean, it, it's almost as volatile, right? There's, there's a lot of studies that come, come out every week right. which look at this and which look at that. Um, not all of them are uh, mega impactful. Not right. all of them are going to change the way that I'm going to practice when I go downstairs uh, or, or my colleagues in, in different right. centers. So, um, so some things are just interesting. Yeah. Here's a study that says we looked at all this data and there's a correlation between having one drink a day and breast cancer, but we're not saying it, it, it's, a, it, it's a causal effect. We're just saying we've noticed that 
there are women who like to drink alcohol, one drink a night, and they have a slight uptick in, in breast cancer. Absolutely. So the, the thing is, all, you know, why, is, why does that make headlines? Because breast cancer remains something that uh, right. uh, bothers all of us, right? right? Because it tends to uh, affect younger women. Uh, oftentimes they're parents of younger kids uh, and it affects us emotionally and so you know if there was a cancer that we could get rid of uh, that would definitely be a really good one or definitely at the top of the top of the list not necessarily saying that any of the other ones we wouldn't want to get rid of either but uh, that's that's why these things sort of get headlines it's like oh we learned something new about breast cancer the key things about breast cancer that are really really cool don't get talked about and and so looking looking at the actual breast cancer cells looking at the the receptors that they express trying to identify those receptors that are only expressed by individual breast cancer cells and right. being able to target a drug at that receptor so you can actually target a breast cancer cell itself and not anything else that's the cool stuff and and there are a lot of mm -hmm. studies out there like that are that are looking at that right uh, but in you know they're balanced against these other ones that get headlines yeah. and so back to the you know how do you live your life I, I still think you live your life uh, the absolute best you can uh, you know there's there's uh, studies out there would suggest that uh, a drink a day is not necessarily bad for you, but potentially could be good for you in other arenas. Right. Not necessarily breast cancer, but <laughs> right. you know, lower your risk of heart attack or stroke, that type of thing. Um, you know, social drinking in terms of one or two drinks, I think, is dynamite. Right. Uh, but I think anything in moderation is also dynamite. Mm -hmm. Exercise is great, but exercise you can overdo exercise. So exercise in moderation, uh, a, a good heart healthy diet, and a good uh, low Low calorie diet is great. Uh, you can go overboard. Obviously, there's a lot of eating disorders. So anything can be taken to an extreme, mm -hmm. moderation, and trying the best you can. You know, the, it's the mirror test at the end of the day. You look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Did I do the best I could for me today?" Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to set a goal that Dr. Michael Lim comes in here one day and says, "McGraw, stop exercising." You're doing You're it doing too much. Too You're doing much. too much. You look too good. Stop exercising. <laughs> Dr. Michael Lim, always a... Um, Are you going to hold your breath on that one? <laughs> yeah, say, you look really. too good. <laughs> That's not funny. Cardiologist <laughs> with SLU Care at SSM Health, SLU Hospital, always a reasoned voice in mm -hmm. the wilderness. Dr. Michael Lim, right. thanks for coming in. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Doc. 827.